Hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Jake, and this is Neverland, Neverland Navigation, Navigation Radio. Radio. Where we celebrate New Year's Eve, New Year's, by remembering the a... The ultimate New Year's Eve party. The ultimate New Year's <laughs> Eve party. That's a great way of describing this. Um, we're ta- Today, of course, we're talking about Pleasure Island. Anybody remember Pleasure Island? <laughs> Woo! Um, did you ever get to go to Pleasure Island? I walked through it, but I didn't go to it as like a adult where I could stop. Mm-hmm. I was a kid for most of Pleasure Island's existence. Uh-huh. Um, so it was really something that I was looking at from driving past my family, driving past downtown Disney. Yeah. And I would see the big Jessica Rabbit sign. Right. And I would see the big green PI logo. Yeah. Um, and I was all, and Lemuda, and the moon or that wasn't in there. Yeah, it wasn't. But that was the problem. You know, right. we'll get to that. But, but yeah, it all comes back around. Yeah, the and big and moon did guy. you have to walk through it or around it? I did, never did you went do to... Disney Springs? It wasn't Disney Springs, and it was Downtown Disney. No, no, we were See, the Disney Springs Downtown Disney family. Okay, we were. So I did some walking through it or walking around it cool. for a while. It's awesome. Um, that the geographical area still exists in Disney Springs and is used by guests now because um, you can, like, walk through the changed history of it, you know? Yeah. 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 It's like the theme parks where you go, you know what used to be Yes, here? exactly. You can, we basically do that at any time. We <laughs> We're do. in Disney Springs as well. Yeah. Yeah, because that's quite interesting. We even talked about it on one episode. We were talking about our Raglan Road experience, trying to figure out what replaced it, and I found out. Oh, yeah. I I saw, yes, yes, yes. We we should talk about that because that was interesting. We got some garbage information at one point from another person. Which, as we have learned in the couple years that we've been doing this, two years or something, um, is that you have to... uh, Two and a half, I think. Two and a half, right. Oh. Or it's one and a half. Wow. Anyway, we started in the summer. (laughs) Yeah, we lost track as well. Yeah. yeah, we found we found that um, sometimes people just kind of throw out what they've heard. Or yeah, or I think it's like any kind of rumor where somebody's like, "I bet this used to be this because of mm-hmm. this thing that makes it look like it could have been," and then it just like turns into a rumor. Oh, that's definitely what it was, and now now people are giving bad information. Right, especially in the internet age where everything is, you know, like yeah. uploadable and stuff like that. Yeah, you have to you have to research stuff when you hear stuff. Yeah, <laughs> find out if it's true. Do some light research like we do. Yeah, sometimes we do heavy research. Um, today there's kind of a lot to cover. We want to get into a little bit of the history and the backstory of Pleasure Island. What was Pleasure Island? What was on the island? What became of the island? Mm-hmm. And it's a really fascinating story if you haven't heard about this or you don't know a lot about this, or maybe you vaguely remember Pleasure Island, like me. And you've heard about it in passing, but you didn't know its full story. Yeah. Um, or even if you did kind of, if you experienced it, you signed the petition to get them to mm-hmm. not take it away or to bring it back. Mm-hmm. You still, there's still interesting information yeah. on like the history and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's also the reason that we're doing this on um, New Year's Eve um, in the first place or New Year's, New Year's Day. New yeah. Year's Day is that every night in Pleasure Island, they would have a countdown to midnight, uh, and it was New Year's Eve every night. Um, and there was a stage show, and they would have, what, fireworks Fireworks. And stuff. Yeah. yeah, a countdown and fireworks, and there was a stage show that was like, um, you know, an ex- like, like you would, what you would imagine would be there on actual New Year's Eve. Yeah, it's cute. It's definitely one of those, in my opinion, that's one of those classic, Disney experience touches, you yeah. know what I mean, to like bring Pleasure Island to life and have everyone come together in the moment. Have you seen the um, the Simpsons clip or the Simpsons episode about this? No, but I was made aware of it doing research for this. Yeah, um, I, I wasn't aware that the Simpsons um, <laughs> touched on Pleasure Island, but I'm delighted that it like lives on in parody form. Yeah, it was a parody, so they didn't even say Pleasure Island, but they right. they did um, talk about. The fact that it was New Year's every night and Marge says uh, how wonderful it must be that you get to ring in the New Year uh, like over and over and over again. And the waiter's like, 
kill me now <laughs> or something right. like that. They're in a dance club and yeah. it's New Year's Eve every 15 minutes <laughs> or something is their version of it. Yeah. Which is pretty funny. And I thought, oh, well, maybe this was annoying for the cast members. But actually, I think it's just like doing the same show over and over again. It's probably not that different from working the fireworks yeah. shift at Because it's Kingdom. just the same thing every night. I'm sure yeah. you're not like... You know, you're not excited like it's the new year, of course, but you're working. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you get used to it just like any job. But there was um, a little bit of drama with the new, even the New Year's aspect of this. Did you, are, are you going really? into that or am I? No, I didn't know there was drama. So it, when they first started, they, the New Year's Eve celebration every night started a year after it opened. And they first had it where it was in it was outside where they had the fireworks and the stage show but also mm-hmm. they had it going inside all of the clubs and the clubs were kind of like why do we have to do this this isn't helping us mm. if people want to come out they can so then they changed it and then also the uh the properties across the lake there mm-hmm. from you know if you're imagining Disney Springs or you're imagining downtown Disney you know that there it's on a lake they were getting like all of the noise coming straight there's no trees or anything to break up the noise are you talking about like where saratoga springs and all that is now? i am but that is not what i read who was the main complaint people complaining but but mm-hmm. yes i am talking okay. about that i'm just trying to make sure i'm thinking of the right like lake, lake the, the situation. right body of water yeah okay. well you can imagine where like um the boathouse it well not the book, Paddlefish, which was Lily's. Empress Lily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that body of water. So, like, of course, if you're doing a performance that includes, like, loud music and shouting and fireworks, and then right behind you is water, that noise is going to go straight across. Yeah. So that was a little bit of, of a <laughs> of a drama. Understood, yeah. I could see how that would cause issues. Noise is, like, a big factor to consider when, yeah. you're, when you're planning stuff when disney is doing stuff like yeah that. yeah i'm always surprised um that i haven't had an experience where I, i've been in a hotel and was woken up at, at whatever time mm. because of something going on like because this is a little off topic sorry we do that um on this show <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about how they had posted a sign they have right now no no like two weeks or three weeks ago, posted a sign outside of like uh, the boardwalk and the beach club saying like warning guests that they're doing firework like previews, like tests in Mm. the middle of the night. They do that, yeah. Because of the Epcot show that is now, there's a new Epcot show, night show now. But when they test it, they're testing it in the middle of the night. So, Mm -hmm. and I, I was saying to Michael, I'm surprised that this hasn't been an issue for me before. I've never heard of anybody being like, I was woken up at 3 a.m. because they're testing fireworks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, maybe. Have Have you ever stayed in, like, the Contemporary, the Poly, or the Grand Floridian? I have. Um, I feel like those but, would be the ones. As a child. Oh, okay. I feel like those are, those are so well, close even a teenager. to the castle. Mm-hmm. But I feel like those would be maybe the ones. I agree. Yeah. But then again, the board. But they're also not that. generally that late, but they are when there's a party. Yeah, and also um, they test the testing as yes. really well. I think would wake more people up. Anyway, I found that interesting. So, so they ultimately did change it to where the New Year's Eve party was just an out outside the outside stage show event, mm-hmm. not something that had to be done in the clubs. Interesting. Yeah, one of the one of the small changes, um, probably to the. Um, to the island that maybe didn't feel significant to um, yeah the 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 people who might not know any different right might have had an impact on that it would make sense to me that if you wanted to do new year's you needed to be outside because of fireworks so yeah, yeah i don't i i don't think if i was going for the purpose of going to like the comedy warehouse or a 70s style club that i'd feel the need to do Ooh, we should start to get into we should start to get into some of the stuff because now we're now we're talking about things that might be piquing people's interest mm-hmm. if they don't know about Fletcher island um should we start back in the back in the back like we always do <laughs> back in the beginning of time yes let's start at the beginning of time okay walt disney world is opening in 1971 obvi and in 1975 um they open the shopping district for people to go to. And at the time, that's called Lake 
Buena Vista shopping village. Okay, I have to yeah. look at my notes. Yeah. Um, because this has changed names a million times. Well, and this is the least Disney least fun of all the names. So boring. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. can't believe it was ever called yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But also around property, there were things like Shades of Green and stuff like that where not everything they had on offer was like a big splashy thing. I feel like that attitude actually didn't come in until the 80s, especially with like Michael Eisner trying to spice things up for the consumers. And that's actually a big part of this as well. Yeah. Um, but Lake, uh, Lake Point of Vista Shopping Village changed its name to Disney World Village in 1977. And then there it is. <laughs> the Disney Village Marketplace in 1989. Okay. Um, and most of that is honestly just them swapping out retail locations and restaurants and slightly reconfiguring sidewalks and things. Sometimes it's hard now to know what they own and what they don't own. So I can see them being like, okay, people don't even realize that we own this. So right. let's, let's put our name on it. Yeah, you know what I mean? I do. Like Space 220 is not owned by Disney. That shocks me every time I think about it. Right. Yeah. In Epcot. A restaurant in Epcot. Okay, go on. <laughs> yeah, it is a... a I, I bet most people never even know or I think about it. Or, yeah. 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 It's just something that is the way that they do business. The same way that they don't... I think it would maybe surprise people how much um, Disney... I don't want to say outsources, but... Um, like, small businesses, local businesses, freelancers, they print their maps, they yeah. fabricate track, they fabricate rock work, they fabricate sidewalks. Like, so much of what you see is Disney is calling the shots, designing, organizing, and then having this army of contractors yeah. come in and throw everything together. It's very chaotic. It's very, you know, there's a lot of movement. Maybe not chaotic. It's if it's well managed, it's not chaotic. Right. But it's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. Is what I mean. Yeah. Um, I feel like that restaurant thing is kind of the same. Anyway, so um, Michael Eisner is someone we talk about a lot. He was a very influential CEO for the Walt Disney Company, um, and in the eighties, he we have talked about this in some of our past stuff too. He wanted to look at the park from new perspectives. So one of the ways that he famously did that was that he would take his teenage child around with him, and he thought that um, Tomorrowland was boring. So they put Alien Encounter in there to spice it up for the teenagers. Yeah, and make it he more really wanted like younger blood up in the Disney area. He wanted to offer more than just like um, just the very, adults with kids, right? Yeah. Just the very um, classic Disney family brand. He wanted to branch out. Uh -huh. um, and one of the things that he noticed was that people were, of course, coming to Walt Disney World and visiting, um, but he also found that they were doing other things around Orlando, and he saw that as an opportunity to be like, okay, so what can we do to limit people's Orlando vacation experience to just staying on Disney property. Yeah, he didn't want anybody leaving Disney property. You're staying here. Yeah. Um, We're going to offer everything. Right. And so one of the big questions that he asked when he started looking at Walt Disney World Resort was, well, what are people doing in Orlando? And something that they were doing all the time, especially young people who he was trying to court into the park, was going to Church Street Station, which was in Orlando... It's like an Orlando local fixture that you probably hear about more than most of them. And it's just the concept when it opened was just having multiple different themed nightclubs for one admission price. So you paid one door charge and then you got to go to whichever of the different clubs that you wanted to go to. Does this still exist? That's a great question. Um, we can call and ask. Oh, I, I don't know. I didn't look. Okay. I, I wasn't ready for the quiz. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> no, it's my fault. Um, no, no, I, I don't, yeah, go on. Church Street Station was um, definitely the big inspiration for this in the same way that, like, Universal Studios was the inspiration indirectly for MGM Studios. Exactly. Like, just building stuff so that people don't go to your competitor. I, you know what? I, <laughs> I thought that exact same thing when I was reading about this, about the Church Street Station thing, and then Michael Eisner is also the one that was, like, the big one behind MGM. Right. And I'm, like, thinking he just... He, like, his competition, like, moves are, okay, 
okay, you left here to go there. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that idea. I'm gonna steal that idea more than coming mm. up with original stuff. Yeah, he was all about trying to. Well, why would you go there for that experience? We could do that experience yeah, we can here do that. at Disney. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, and um, I'm not really saying it's a bad thing because we got some great stuff out of it. But it is an obvious strategy. Yeah, like, it is a strategy. You see, you see what he's up to if you look at history. Um, right. I, he's like, I'm going to make it better, though. Yeah, that was always the goal, I feel. Um, also, MGM and Pleasure Island opened the same day. Really? Yeah. So oh, wow. there's another, like, you could have done opening day and then gone and, then and, partied. Gone and partied at one of the multiple um, venues that Morgan's going to talk about. Um, but that's how it started. Um, that's how Pleasure Island started. Um, so it opened um, in 1986. Okay, interesting. Um, oh, sorry, that's when construction began. And then it opened on May 1st, 1989, 89. which yeah, is, okay. that's why I said it's the same name. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, hmm. Yeah, I didn't just lie halfway through. Um, <laughs> the So then... What a giant day for them. I can't even imagine... I can't imagine being on property for a day where two massive things like that are opening. Yeah. They or working there. They don't do that anymore. No, no. They don't do that anymore. Um, so later on, the complex is renamed Disney Village Marketplace. Man, everybody keeps track. So we're on Disney Village Marketplace. I feel like that's the one I remember from when I was a little kid. Gotcha. But I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. And then in the 90s... Um, Um, in the 90s, things started to get sh shaken up again because they were starting to move toward, like, a trendier feel. They renamed everything Downtown Disney. Pleasure Island's clubs got switched out. A couple of the clubs got switched out. Um, dining, uh, like, a fast food location became a club. They just kind of switched up the layout of things a little bit. And obviously, renaming it to Downtown Disney was a big deal because that's what a lot of people... Um, uh, my age remember it as because Disney Springs is pretty recent, 2013, pretty recent in the grand scheme of things. Um, but one of the things that they added also was uh, La Nuba, the Cirque du Soleil show during that time. Um, and it kind of spoke to the changing landscape of the area and the different um, entertainment offerings. Um, and they were like pretty far and wide from dance clubs to uh, entertainment oriented clubs like the Adventurers Club, which I'm sure Morgan is going to get into, which I can't wait. Um, but it definitely was centered around a more adult atmosphere, uh, which, uh, which was a little controversial. Some people with Pleasure Island, obviously it became a local, um, this was a cast member favorite spot to be. Yeah. For sure. Especially clubs like Mannequins. Um, and I think Pleasure Island got a little bit of a reputation of being, like, where the cast members went to get wasted. Well, sure. They're going to go somewhere. You know what I mean? The, the... <laughs> but is there a location on property right now that you would say that's the one spot all the cast members go to get wasted Oh, no, at? no, no. Probably not. I think Pleasure Island was getting that type of vibe a little bit. Oh, okay. And I think that's honestly part of the reason that they eventually decided... Maybe not. In addition to the fact that like attendance had been steadily declining um, in the 2000s until 2008 when Pleasure Island closed. Right. And they decided they were going to rename it Hyperion Wharf um, and switch to a more nautical, more family friendly atmosphere. But then that transition was canceled when they got greenlit to go ahead with the overall revamp into Disney Springs from downtown Disney. Yeah. And then they decided on calling it The Landing, which is what it's called now. Right. So, wow, we've been through so much history in such a short amount of time. But that's the, like, physical backstory of Pleasure Island, kind of. The, like, historical backstory but there's also a very interesting fictitious backstory yeah. which is fun i love when disney like makes fake history they're so good at it um but this one is tied to a bunch of different stuff which is fun it's very interwoven into the the disney um legacy now the disney fake history legacy um but i would say this was almost like a prototype for super extensive backstories and themed entertainment because I can't think of one that was more elaborate before this. Can you? No. This I, is like, this is pretty thought out. 
Yeah, this is really thought out. And and a lot of a lot of rides and attractions in Disney history have been have a really big backstory, but this one is so interwoven and like has it it's like it branches out into all of these different areas. I I think still it's the most uh, intricate. Yeah, like if you're if we're talking if we could combine um, the legacies of the Pleasure Island lore and what eventually became the Disney Springs lore. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of backstory there, but I'll get into um, the the what they describe as the history of Pleasure Island, um, which was that there was this guy named Meriwether Adam Pleasure, and he um, took his family and moved them to Florida to open this like yacht and boat construction shop on this island um but then like in the movie frozen (laughs) captain pleasure was lost at sea and died (laughs) and his family was left to run the island but it was ravaged by a storm and destroyed which is very sad but then disney discovered the remnants of the island and that's a tribute to all the fun that he would like to have meriwether pleasure (laughs) which is such a fun fake name. Um, He had a reputation for throwing these elaborate parties for people who worked in his boat shop and locals on the island, his family members. He would have these decadent, elaborate celebrations. And with travelers who were coming by the party, or who were coming by the island, he invited them to the party as well. So in the spirit of uh, Meriwether Adam Pleasure, Disney wanted to take the remnants of the island and turn it into an entertainment complex so that people could experience the community and celebration that they would experience at the pleasure parties. Um, Later on, retroactively, and a big part of the lore of that is the Adventurers Club. Right. Um, did you research how that's tied into the Society of Explorers or Adventures, or should I go into it a little bit? You can go into it. Um, I, yeah, I, I've got some, but... I, we probably have the same thing. It's not... Okay. There's only well, one real, real, like, strong connection, which is that when Skipper's Canteen opened in Magic Kingdom, they retroactively kind of tied the Meriwether Adam Pleasure story into the Society of Explorers and Adventures, which is cool. Because they have a fez on display there that supposedly was owned by uh, Captain Pleasure, and it's like inscribed with the SEA. Like, in the club, is that what you're talking about? No, it's in the it's in uh, Skipper's Canteen at Magic Kingdom. What fez. did you say it is? It's a fez, which I don't is know like, what that is. It's like those little red hats, oh. you know, the hat that Abu wears. Okay, yeah, yeah. He wears one of those, and it was like standard fare for people to wear them at the adventurers club okay and then so there's one of those in there that's inscribed with the sea oh logo, okay interesting to say that meriwether captain pleasure was part of it yes and then disney went on to elaborate that he was running his own charter of the society of explorers and adventurers in the form of the adventurers club right like as a prototype and so the which is so it's such a cute backstory yeah yeah i love that and so the adventurers club is where he would invite all of his his adventures adventurer friends to come party right um there's also another thing in in skipper's canteen what there's a book that's you know okay if you don't know, there's a lot, a lot of stuff all over Skipper's Canteen. I feel like Skipper's Canteen is the new Adventures Club, although, you know. They definitely have, I would say it's the closest thing we've got. It's the closest thing we've got. There you go. Um, there's a book in where there's a ton of books. One of them is by um, Mr. Pleasure, and it is called, uh, hold on one second. It's called, like, Another New Year. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. Yeah. I hadn't seen that. So it's, that's just a nod to, to Pleasure Island. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Speaking yeah, another New Year. Nods yeah. to Pleasure Island. You can order there a Kungaloosh. Yes. Which yep. is like a, their signature cheers, I guess. So Kungaloosh is in the Adventurers Club is a greeting similar to Aloha, where it means hello and goodbye. It's accompanied by a 
full on like hand movement. Did you know? Yeah. Yeah. Where you put, I don't know what it is. Don't ask me to do it. Okay. You put your, your (laughs) right hand, the palm of your right hand above your navel. And then some of the people said that you're supposed to, um, be like doing a pat of your tummy, like you're hungry. But another said that you're supposed to move it like a fish. Okay. Your hand like a fish. Then you lift the same hand up to your mouth and take a fake drink. And then you lift the same hand up as like a hello and you take congaloosh. Okay, let's try. Three, okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Congaloosh, right? Oh, wow. It was also the name of two <laughs> different alcoholic drinks that you could order at the Adventures Club. One was the old congaloosh. I don't have the recipe in front of me, but it was... That one for sure had vodka and then some fruity aspect. And the new Kungaloosh, which had Captain Morgan's. Um, And then Kungaloosh also referred to a chocolate pastry in the Adventurers Club day. And today you can get a Kungaloosh dessert at uh, Skipper's Canteen, which is also a pastry. I can't remember if it was chocolate. We did try it. Okay. Um, But so that is a... uh, and there's another thing on the Skipper's Canteen menu that that um, ties back. Did you want? Did you know? Do you want to know? Yeah, of course I do. Okay, so in all in the Adventurers Club and Pleasure Island as a whole, one of the main cast of characters was a woman named Pamela Perkins, mm-hmm. right? And so she was the um, president of. The Adventures Club, I believe. I'm going to have to check that. Good for Pamela. Yeah. And she was kind of a busybody and kind of a, um, in the stage show. Let's, let me just explain. You can decide what, what, uh, you would say about her. But in the stage show, she comes out and she's trying to teach you to sing the, uh, the New Year's song. What's it called? Mm, Old Lang Syne. That's it. And she's like kind of giving you like, teachery stuck in the mud vibes you know what i mean no Mm -hmm. fun no fun and then some scantily clad singer comes out dressed kind of like a disco ball in a leotard and is like no no we're doing this party stuff and she's singing and then there's a bunch of scantily clad uh like people dancing and singing and then by the end of it uh, Mrs. Perkins is also singing and like, you know, getting on into it. But she's like dressed in like the 1920s, 30s, like teacher uniform with the like, you know, collar up mm-hmm. her neck and long sleeves and a long dress I could and a bun. Her. Yeah. So in Skipper's Canteen, and she's also part of the like show that goes on within Adventures Club. Right. So she's like everywhere, you right. know? Um, there's a dish called Perkins noodles. Oh, yeah, I didn't that realize has, that was a reference. Yeah, I know. I didn't either until cool. I started researching this. So it's, uh, noodles and tofu and a kind of a. Amazing. Yeah. So that's that. I mean, it's, it's a light reference because it's just the name. It doesn't really even tie into the character no. to be honest, because I don't see this woman eating tofu. But it's named but, for her. Yeah. Right. I right. love that. I love those little touches to honor. I mean, something that most people didn't even know existed. Yes, exactly. I, I mean, there could. It's Disney, so there might be some reason that this specific dish. Maybe, <coughs> maybe you would say noodles are boring, and then they become. You know what I mean? Oh Will we gosh. add this sauce, and now it's like, yeah, I mean, saucy noodles. That level of thought would not surprise. It me. wouldn't surprise me either. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so that's fun. <laughs> that is really fun. The Adventurers Club is obviously, I think, one of the standout offerings from the Pleasure Island days because it was so immersive and so Disney. Yes. Um, but they had a lot on offer. Actually, I, w- I would say, to me, like, that's the one I'm, like, drooling over that I'm, like, upset I didn't get to go to because it's yeah. so Disney history, like, chock full mm-hmm. of all this stuff. And all of this backstory and all of this, like, imagination and then add in fun and they added in comedy and stuff like that. Food and, and drink. Yeah, yeah. Entertainment. Yeah, like yeah it all. mostly drink, but yeah. Yeah. Um, entertainment. Pastry and drink. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but it had just so much of this stuff that you could probably spend 
you know, like weeks in there and not see everything. We would want we would want to go all the time. I would want to like open. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. I would be going there I'd regularly. Be my birthday in there. Yes. You know? Yeah. Just checking it out. You interact. There are at least nine cast members that you're there are like full in on the story. Amazing. Like they're like living the story, and um, they you interact with them. They, it's funny sometimes. Throughout, like, the different rooms of the club, Yes, right? yes, like, exactly. You could go to one room and see Miss Perkins teaching you to sing and then go to another room where they're learning, like, how to take a shot in a different way. Yeah, like, they know, teach like, you that, that greeting that, that Jake Kundalus, and I just yeah, yeah. did. Um, I stuff love like the that. That's the first thing that. you learn. It's yeah. like... Um, it's like a play that you walk around. Yes. There's something in New York called Sleep No More, which is actually closing now, but it was like a really long running theatrical concept where it's a play, but you walk through different rooms to see different actors putting on different like little tableaus or vignettes or whatever. Oh, cool. And honestly, to me, this is like almost in the spirit of that. Yes. Where like you can explore the club and yeah. fall into different little scenarios i i just think the idea of that is so whimsical oh yes so yeah. disney it's funny because i was thinking about it when i was like i i just am kind of like oh my god i can't believe i didn't get to experience this um and actually it closed in 2008 so i kind of could have but um, right. i didn't didn't know, didn't know. Better, yeah yeah and uh but then i was thinking i wonder if i would have talked myself out of going because of the fear of the like um What's it called? Audience. Audience participation, participation kind of thing. Because it's not like, I'm great with watching a stage show, but if mm -hmm. it's like an audience participation thing, I get super nervous. That's my personality. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if I would have talked myself out of it. And then I think I need to make sure I don't do that from now on. Because I Just could have case. missed this terrible, I mean, this wonderful experience because of a terrible, like, phobia over something silly yeah but i think that also goes to show that if you're not necessarily someone who goes in for a certain kind of thing if it's disney sometimes it's worth it to just try it once to make sure you don't like it because they tend to approach things from a different standpoint from their competitors As yeah especially now yeah, yeah. um but but yeah, so the, this the Adventures Club was the one that got the most like petitioning to bring back or not to take away in the first place. Um, although this the the closing of the whole property was kind of a surprise. Mm -hmm. It it really came on quick. Yeah. Did you get in? Are you getting into? Um, like I know you talked about Lanuba a little bit, but were you going to get into, or am I getting into like? the traffic situation you can get it i honestly okay. i would love to hear the, the the a recap of the traffic situation because i think it's one of the more i'm surprised we know this you know what i mean this seems like something disney would not well it's i unless you're talking about something different i just mean like um it's i mean people experienced it so for for the longest time before lanuba Lanuba and House of Blues, which are still over there in that the what's called the West Side, uh -huh. um, and back then there was a Virgin Megastore. Uh, wow! But anyway, before those existed over there, uh -huh. so like in the '90s and the late '80s, um, you to get into Pleasure Island, you would pay a, an admission fee and you would get in, right? Uh -huh. And and that gets you into any club you want. Any, sh you know, show... Like Church Street Station. Like Church Street Station. Right. Right. Then when they built Lanuba and House of Blues and uh, the whole West Side, it had some other stuff at the time that's not there anymore. Um, everything's evolving, you know. But when they did that, they were forcing people that wanted to go from West Side to the downtown Disney shopping area, but didn't want to pay for admission to Pleasure Island to go like around Pleasure Island. Oh. And it's like a pretty long and inconvenient and tight at some points, especially like if let's say Lanuba just let out, everybody's walking over there, kind of this tight, not Disney-ish area mm -hmm. to not have to go through Pleasure Island. So they were theoretically getting a lot of complaints about this because it's just not a fun experience to get from one to the other so 
their solution, which maybe it should have been let's bus people or something, shuttle or tram or something. Sure. But instead, their solution was let's not make it a one admission gets you into the whole Pleasure Island. And let's say anybody can go into Pleasure Island, but it, you have to pay individually per club. Right. So that was the start of the end. Mm. Because A, the people that were used to it didn't like it. And then B, the uh, it, now since the inside of Pleasure Island, including the New Year's Eve party, was open to anybody right. for free, that attracted a lot of what they called um, undesirables. Like um, there, were, there was some crime that was happening. There were a lot of teenagers from local high schools that, ins that, that they were going to meet up at Pleasure Island because why not? Why, yeah. why meet up at the mall when you can meet up at this place that's having a, you know, New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve where okay, you can nice. potentially pick up a, a half drink drink and drink it. They were, so they were having a lot of those kind of problems. They were getting regular um, reports to the police of crime happening mm -hmm. because it was free now. Right. Um, when I was saying, I'm surprised that we know this, what I, were you talking about the crime? Well, I'm like, yeah, I guess. And I'm also, guess I'm talking about Disney not controlling this story more, like, in the public perception. Um, they've faced similar stuff like this. Michael Eisner has faced similar stuff like this with a project called Videopolis, which was, like, a video, music video-based dance club in um, Disneyland that was free. And in Pleasure Island. Free. And, oh, that's right. Videopolis. Got a Videopolis. East. Yes. Wow, look at us all coming back. Yeah. But at Videopolis in Disneyland, gang fights, violence, crime, right. all the stuff that happened here because they keep making the same mistake. Over and yes. Over again. I, and I'm, <laughs> what I'm surprised about is this stuff starts happening. I don't understand how th the solution is, but just shut it all down. Yeah. Why, like, okay, well, Clearly, opening it up and not having an admission to get in was the problem because that's when the problem started. Right. So let's, instead of doing this, offer tram service from the west side to downtown side for anybody that doesn't want to go through Pleasure Island. I, th th that seems like an easy, cheap, no-brainer to me. They've got golf carts. <laughs> yeah. Lying well, around. like, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. This seems like such a... Uh, closing it down seems like such a big undertaking you know what i mean i think there is also like in the mid to late 2000s i also feel like there was within disney an attitude shift that was like okay let's rein it back in a little bit in terms of like um our image our like public image because i think with what you're talking about like the crime with pleasure island and um this like drunk cast member hangout situation that I'm talking about. Yeah. I think all of that played a factor because Disney is not dumb and when they're thinking about closing stuff down, they're not just thinking about how much money it's making or not making, although that obviously is a big factor, but also guest perception of the overall experience, guest feelings about particular parts of each attraction. They like to be very thorough with the feedback that they receive. And if you've got two major sources of negative th feedback for the same small section of your <laughs> shopping district. Yeah, yeah. Some executive is cutting that shopping district and it's not even a question. Right. Yeah. I mean, I from that point of view, totally it makes sense. And and I do, it's harder, I think, for me and maybe for you, maybe not, you seem to imagine it pretty well. But um, since I didn't experience it and I wasn't around a bunch of cast members getting you know what I mean? I, yeah. Did people know they were cast members? That's a, That would be my other question. Um, I think it... Did people know they were cast members? Perhaps not. Um, but it's more of, I think, like a reputation thing where, like, if um, people are friends of cast members or are locals or something... Sure. Then I think the word kind of just gets around. In the same they way were that having... now, like... Yeah. Ha like... Um, cool hot spots are like shared online and then immediately swarmed yeah. by people. I feel like that same kind of culture via word of mouth was very strong 
in the 90s and 2000s in Disney. They were actually, and, and you probably know this, but they were offering what was called cast member Thursdays where they were letting in cast members for free, mm -hmm. which obviously is going to encourage drunken cast members. Right. So interesting. Um, when I was in my early... Maybe it just went too far. Maybe. You know. I, from what I read, it had a lot more to do with that, the like crime and that having to walk through Pleasure Island situation. That's a lot of negatives already. Yeah. You know? And if you're like, potentially, if you're taking your family, like with young kids to Lanuba and you want to walk back to downtown Disney, you don't necessarily want to walk through a drunken, clubby type area, yeah. even if it is Disney. Right. Um, with teenagers taking sips of half drunk drinks. Yes. Drunk cast members spilling out of the club. Yeah. <laughs> when, when I was in my early 20s, I had a friend that was a cast member. Um, and the one of the cast member drunken hangouts was like the TGI Fridays. That's mm. don't, I don't think it's there anymore. Okay. Is it there? I, it doesn't in matter. downtown Disney? No, no. In Disney Springs? Very close. Very, <laughs> but pretty close oh really you know you know you don't know what i'm talking about i don't know anyway um i don't go to tgi fridays a lot yeah i don't i don't either yeah, yeah. anyway um it's been but, more of a saturday or something. but i went to to meet him and it was like wall to wall packed with like drunken 20 somethings mm. and i mean that's the thing you cast members are mostly young college program there to kind of take a break from college and have fun you know what i mean right but were you there the time we went to a denny's and saw a cast member like in their uniform i think so that does take you out of the like <sighs> you know what i mean yeah i just was surprised that somebody could be out i wonder if that was against the rules if you if you hang out around orlando enough that is something that you do see. Well, I know, but why? Tori are... and I have been in a Wendy's and seen. Yeah, cast in in uniform, in full huh? Costume. Yeah. But like, why aren't why I I would have assumed that the uniforms were being left in the utilidors or whatever. Oh, um, I think they give you pieces that you have to return. From yeah. what I understand, and that if you don't return them, you have to pay for them. All which right, sucks. Um. Well, because you're probably selling them on eBay. I, I bet that's because of issues that they've had. I actually totally no, understand that. Totally. No, I'm saying it would suck if you like lost something and then yeah. you have to pay for it, which I bet happens. But um, I understand why they charge. But um, I don't know if it's against the rules or not for you to wear your costume. It must not be because you're right. I've seen it more than once. Like well, at just because you've seen it doesn't mean it's not against the rules. That's true. That's you true. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, do you want me to get into some of the... Um, things that were there yeah i would love a little tour of pleasure Island. okay that would be great the, the tour part is going to be a little bit difficult because of every like something would be there to. for a few years then it would go away then you know what i mean i don't mean like a yeah. geographical tour yeah i couldn't i that. more just mean like a virtual podcast <laughs> like what you what was yeah that? yeah so so the first the the first thing that I'm going to talk about is Michael Eisner's first thing to open on this on the East Coast, oh. right? So this is his first original idea thing that he's opening, and that was video Videopolis, mm -hmm. Videopolis, Video East, um, which we've touched on, right? So it was a dance stage and area for teenagers. Mm -hmm. So teenagers, right? <laughs> no alcohol, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, so. It, it didn't go well. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it shut down pretty quickly. Um, well, teen clubs are a thing. Yeah, it was outdoors, right? Um, Vide Videopolis, Disneyland was outdoors. I don't know anything about Videopolis. Well, it said from what I, and I, there were so many things I needed to look into that I didn't like see any pictures or anything of this one, but it said dance stage and area. So I think that it was outdoors. Nice. And the reason it was called Videopolis was because on huge screens, they would play music, current music videos of the time. Right. And there were a few other clubs that wound up doing that, like Cage, for instance, which was open from 1990 to 1992. I mean, we're still in, like, big music video era. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like it would be almost strange today for a club to open with the premise of music videos because music videos are not popular. That being said, every gay club I've ever been to in my entire life, they put, like, music videos on the yeah the it feels like, like a, a pretty basic club thing to do right the you know music I mean? videos were popping at the time that videopolis yeah you know, sprung out it was mtv yeah central yeah 
Um, another interesting thing, speaking of teens, teen area, uh -huh. is that um, after 7 p.m., you had to be 18 or older to enter unless you were accompanied by a parent. Isn't that wild? To answer a pleasure island? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Does it? Does it make sense to have 10 and 12 year olds in there? <laughs> um, Again, I haven't been, so I'm, I don't know how I'm much debauchery they, is happening in the streets. I'm you know assuming what I mean? they couldn't go into the club, so it was probably just to like visit the comedy warehouse, okay. right? And stuff, and the shops, I would assume. Yeah, maybe. Because they're not going into mannequins. So like, what are, what are we talking about? Or Jessica's, about? right? Right, or well, Jessica's. Well, I mean, yeah. But, I guess there's not an age restriction on Victoria's Secret, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Did they just let anybody wander in Probably. There? Cool. Anyway. Interesting. Um, it was a different time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another club offering was called the Neon Armadillo. This was a country western type club, and it cool. was uh, closed in 1988, so it didn't make it very long. And mm. then what took over was uh, BET. Okay. So they went from country western to BET. Um, and that was a pretty standard club. You know what I mean? Cool. Um, the Comedy Warehouse is one of the ones that people still remember and miss and, and mm -hmm. write letters about. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And uh, at the beginning, they had a comedy set that was called Forbidden Disney. But they were having a lot of repeat customers, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Repeat locals. So they wound up changing it to an improv type show which was wildly popular. The Comedy Warehouse itself was very, very popular. Um, and that stayed open like the whole time. So that was open until uh, 2008. And one of the, if not the most popular thing at Pleasure Island, even more so than the Adventures Club or, or tied with. I feel like um, this, w this is like a no-brainer concept that Disney should have a comedy club. I guess. We don't have one anymore? Why? Well, we've got Monsters, Inc. Don't say that. <laughs> it's a comedy club. <laughs> That's a children's show. <laughs> We're talking about different what? things. What? Insult comedy. <laughs> yeah, it's Improv. Like, you ever remember children? That's what they do. Insult comedy. Yep. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I, I'm sad that we don't have like something like the Comedy Warehouse. Now. Yeah, it's. I'm kind of surprised that this didn't make it. Yeah, why because, not? Yeah, exactly. Comedy is... It's not like there's no clubs in Disney, and it's not like it wouldn't fit in. There are places now in Disney Springs that aren't really geared towards little kids. Right. It's not like everything is super little kid now. No. So I think that that one could have made it. Yeah, I, I could see that. I honestly think the Adventures Club could have been kept. Yeah. I I do get some of these, like, more basic clubs kind of going away. Yeah, I think the ones that were just places to drink and dance. That were the same as any other. Yeah, yeah. with, like, slightly varying themes or, like, a signature special effect or something. Right. I see why they wanted to mix that, especially if they were having, like, a, a public image question about yeah. whether or not they should keep it right um but that being said i feel like we really have gone the other way of things where um is there only one club in disney now i can only think of the one Atlantic at boardwalk city uh -huh. dance company and that one's not open all the time and then there's the dueling pianos at um jelly rolls which is like a drinking type of situation for sure yeah um but other than that like adult entertainment or well <laughs> like adult oriented offerings even in disney springs yeah not a lot they right. really shied away from that after pleasure island they said we are out of this business yeah yeah kind of makes you wonder big reversal yeah i mean maybe they were having a lot more crime issues than we even understand yeah maybe um maybe this is the controlled that, version of the story yeah that that yeah. seems like what would do it for a business you know what i mean if they're like having issues with things we don't know like you know mm -hmm. and theft and rape and stuff like that like that could be an issue i know that can be an issue yeah, at clubs that oof, I, I can't imagine trying to like police that right in a disney situation um I although i would say, feel most comfortable going to like a dance club at disney than like going to some random downtown that's what i'm saying um Maybe they were, you know, something that also um, has, unfortunately, has to be considered as, like, vulnerability to, like, terrible things happening. And I feel like Disney Springs, downtown Disney, is, like, somewhere that tries to be extra particular about that kind of stuff for good reason. 
um, and clubs are sometimes like targets of things. Um, and obviously Orlando has a very personal history with that. And I'm yeah. not saying that's, you know, that predates that, but I'm not saying that's why, but I'm saying maybe that's also like why they haven't gone back to the format is because clubs are a little dangerous. Sure. Sometimes. Yeah. So, like yeah. in that book, um, the, the book that Michael read, what was it? The, it was, Anyway, they, they were talking about how um, there was that, the shooting that happened at a club in Orlando in Pulse, yeah. Pulse, yeah. The, the original target was a downtown Disney club, the House of Blues, but they, they kind of got scared off because of the security at House of Blues and then went to Pulse. Terrifying. Terrifying. So, but I, I read that for the first time and sent chills up my body. Yeah. Because, like, we're there. All, all the, the time. time. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a scary thing to think about. Um, but anyway, it does make me sad uh, a little bit that, like, the clubs are gone now because some of them were quite cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm about to get to the coolest one. Cool. Um, the coolest one, in my personal, professional opinion, is mannequins. I want a t-shirt. <laughs> okay. I want a mannequin <laughs> shirt. How cool is that? Um, it was a disco and techno type club, but the coolest part of it in my opinion, was that there's a rotating floor, Ooh, right? So it had a so revolving <laughs> dance floor. Uh, so if you've seen, like, Hamilton, the musical, you know what, like, a re re revolving dance floor kind of is like. Mm -hmm. This one would, like, spin one way for, like, a long time, and then it would stop, and then it would spin the other way. Um, people would say that it was Drunk kind of... falling over yes, each other. <laughs> yeah, people would say that it was difficult to get on and off, especially after drinking. But... I can imagine. Well, luckily, they've got little bats on the floor. You just... I'm just kidding. They're uh, caught in uh, there, oh, so you oh, yeah, yeah. the bats. There probably was something on the floor. And the floor was lit from underneath. Um, in combination with flashing lights. Yeah, and... synchronized light shows were happening. Wow. And then there were live performances by human mannequins. I, I did that in quotes. Um, Dancers. I love this. Yeah. And then there were... there So part of the decor was mannequins kind of everywhere and they're wearing different things. And sometimes if there was one like up towards the ceiling, it would be lowered. Um, from what I heard, it was kind of like a eerie in a cool way. Mm -hmm. I can imagine it. It's almost like a high fashion of scary. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like yeah. runway shows that also creepy. Scary a probably. Bit. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And six months before mannequins and all of pleasure Island closed, they added a new mannequin with like a new outfit. Which, that goes to show you how quickly the closure came on. Uh -huh. Because why spend money on new decor if you're about to shut down? Yeah, yeah. It's like how we will, we will, like, we see now that they're not fixing anything in Dinosaur, and we know why, you yeah. know? But, because it's coming. The end is coming. <laughs> but <laughs> Like, I'm from the world. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, with this, I guess they didn't see the end was coming, so. That's always a little sad. Yeah. When cast members get a little bit blindsided. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, if I were going to go to a club, this would be the one. Uh, Thursday nights, they had some Thursday nights, or for some years, they had were called DV and the, the number eight nights. And that was the official gay club night mm -hmm. for mannequins. Um, so that one sounds, like, super fun. Yeah. I, like, I don't know that I would enjoy being in there. It sounds like a lot of people touching yeah. Like, well, like rubbing any, up, yeah. like, shoulders and sure, stuff. Sure, or, Any club. Or otherwise. And, like, that, to me, sometimes is not fun. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I'm glad it exists because it's Disney applying their theming, visionary yeah. expertise to something unexpected. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a cool part of history. This doesn't seem like something that you would get somewhere else. No, not really, no. Yeah. It's Where the one cool. the the music videos ones, yeah, right, okay. Um, there was a restaurant called Fireworks Factory, which ties into the the history, the fictional history, like you said, as a um, it was a shed where Mister Pleasure would store his fireworks, and now it's a restaurant for the fireworks. Sure, right. I yeah, love because that. he was obsessed with New Year's, and mm -hmm. both of his sons were born on New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. In this fictional backstory. This is such an elaborate, fictitious 
backstory. Yes. The yeah. New Year's Eve birthdays are such a fun touch. Yeah. Uh, when fireworks closed in 2001 they turned it into motion which was a current music club with screens so that's it that went away from the story and towards like basic kind of bland yeah yeah um there was one very short-lived this one's fun in a what were they thinking kind of way Mm. uh called x z f r rockin roller dome which was a rock and roll dance club with roller skating. <laughs> I wonder how many people broke something before they closed it. Because they closed it quick. Yeah. They closed it and uh, changed to rock and roll beach club. And they would have uh, drinks that they served in like sand pails that you would take to the beach. <laughs> Whoa. That's Sounds intense. giant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyway, so that that had similar vibes to when it was the uh, roller dome, but without the roller skating. Right, and maybe some beachy atmosphere. Oh, and they featured live cover bands. Cool. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, There was a Pleasure Island Jazz Company, which was a jazz club that opened in 1993 and closed in 2003. And then, go ahead. No, no, it's okay. (laughs) That is what became Raglan Road. Yeah, so we figured it out. Um, The Irish pub restaurant um there which is one of the only things to survive Mm because that was actually part of pleasure island yeah um that's pretty cool portobello's was a restaurant there as well um and that was part of the fictitious backstory that was supposed to be the merryweather family home um i I don't know if that's i don't think that's still there today no um there yeah there's not a lot that survived and it's surprising to me well paradiso 37 portobello like a mushroom yeah okay because there's that port Tios or oh no 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 not the hot dog people okay um and then um paradiso 37 which still currently stands was part of like was a pleasure island restaurant before it was okay yeah. a landing restaurant although unfortunately we did like the food so <laughs> that kind of sucks but yeah that does that was that was a big miss. Yeah, that was one of the like our top three right now worst restaurants on Disney free well, experiences. I will also say this was like I'm remembering it now. The that was kind of a cool tie in was Jacques Lindsay's Hangar Bar in Disney Springs. Um, he's also um, theoretically a <laughs> member of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. So there's some. Um, fictitious like overlap in the the stories. Um, Did you find what that used to be? Jack Lindsay's hangar bar. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. So it wasn't on Pleasure Island, was it? Yeah. Oh, it was. Well, I mean, was I don't it? know that that building was, but that was part of Pleasure Island. Oh, I don't know. Um, I, I was just curious because I didn't, I didn't come across it. I would. I I've never even know. been into Jock Lindsay's. But we bar. have to go. Yeah, we're just but, not bar people. But I know I they've know, got but more they've than got, this bar. Yeah, well, they turn stuff. it into Christmas themed at Christmas time, right. and they've got like a hot chocolate flight or something that sounds super fun that I'd like to try. Let's just go. I know. Yeah, we oh. should. Next time we're in Disney Springs, we're going. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. I already talked about the Adventures Club. Kangalooch. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to see us come deluge, go to the visual version of the podcast <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and then the New Year's fireworks. Like, I, we talked about that already. That was out. That, that happened from 1990 to 2005. So that ended a little bit before they closed. That sucks. Um, yeah. They did bring it back for the last day of Pleasure Island, yeah. though, which is cool. And I read that there were people camping out and lining up former cast members from the Adventurers yes. Club and the different nightclubs. And I heard they get together sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Adventurers Club inductees. Yep. And together. the Comedy Warehouse. Um, yeah. yeah. That is, to me, always touching. Yes, same. Um, that they, like, assemble at D23 or assemble, have their own events and stuff. Um, also, the Adventurers Club is one of the spaces that Disney let people rent out before um, they closed it, which is kind of cool. Um, Jock, I, I'm sorry, I just looked it up. No, just, tell me. Just so that our listeners can know, Jock Lindsay's is occupying the space previously occupied by the Rock and Roll Beach Club, which before Whoa. that was the Rock and Roll Roller Dump. So cool. you could be taking your shots somewhere where somebody broke their leg. <laughs> 30 years ago or whatever we should we should wear um we should wear uh rock and roll beach club 
t-shirts. Like anybody would know what that was. To the job. It would be such a small amount of people. And it would be, but for our personal satisfaction. It would be fun. Yeah. I'll see if I can find a logo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's not. It's really cool that to, this is my favorite part, honestly, probably, about the Pleasure Island history, other than the fact that some of the attractions I'm very sad I don't get to still experience, is that we get to learn what was in the footprint of what, and now we know, thank you for sharing details, now I know more about like what each thing was that is gone and has oh, yeah. something new there. Yeah. It's cool. There there were also a lot of like um stores and restaurants that I didn't mention that were like just little things. Mm-hmm. Um the notable one is Jessica's, you know, because it was such it's such a what in the world situation that they were selling lingerie. Yeah. And it didn't do well. well it didn't do well. I I think that whether or not you're I just don't understand who they were marketing to. You know what I mean? I, for real, for real. The sign was cool, right? Like, it's still kind of iconic. The Jessica Rabbit, mm-hmm. you know, Jessica It's like a sign. full body sign of her. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say one of the more iconic visual features of Pleasure Island. Neon sign with swinging leg and moving sequins. Cool. That, so that's very cool. But people weren't actually buying stuff because you're right. Like, even if you're younger and a party person like i just don't know that you're gonna stop and buy lingerie they eventually moved that sign though didn't they when that store closed and they just kind of stuck it on a building and let it live there which i think is fine i think that's a good use of the sign yeah just like of her body it was relocated to the west end stage oh where right. it resided until uh, 2006 Perfect. yeah because what, what a what a sign, sign. Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah i i do I, I see why it didn't do well. I see why it did slightly better than the lingerie store on Main Street. No, <laughs> the Wizard open. of Bras. Yeah, that was open for such a small amount of time. Wow. Less than a year, I think, that one. Spiritual soul sisters, when you think about it. <laughs> yeah. I just don't, they failed once, and then they're like, well, let's try again. We've got to get this lingerie store going. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> somewhere. Sometimes they do that. Yeah. Hey. Take another third swing time's at a it. charm. Put it in Epcot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> in world celebration, world hmm. nature, world hmm. discovery. World nature for or sure. world showcase. <laughs> um Wow. Yeah. Anyway. I so. know they had a lot of different stores and stuff, but yeah. if we sat here and went through every store and every little restaurant that was open, uh, even on this island, we'd be here for a long time. Yeah. Because yeah. the Disney Village Marketplace, the Downtown Disney, Disney Springs, history is long and convoluted. Oh, and Planet Hollywood opened in 94, and that was over in that. It was on the west side. That was another one that I went to Planet Hollywood a few a few times. Oh, cool. More than, more than once or twice. The old I really one liked before it. it got turned into the observatory. Yeah, I've been to the new one twice. But the old version that I used to go to when I was a kid that had the stuff absolutely everywhere Mm -hmm. um that if you wanted to go there and then you wanted to walk around like the shops then you'd have to go around or through pleasure island right so a layout problem layout problem that and it makes me wonder if it if they never had that problem and they could keep it where one admission got you into the whole thing and the stuff that was on the west side just kind of got put on the other side. I mean, I don't have any idea. If that it stuff, happened differently. It, yes, if it just happened differently. And Pleasure Island were at a side where it wasn't in the way of anything. There wasn't any go through. It was like, you go in if you want to go or you just don't. You just mm-hmm. stop here. If it would still be around. Maybe renamed, but with a bunch of the stuff still in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why well, did I turn southern? I don't know. Sorry. Um, but yeah. Or... Or I just don't see why it couldn't still be working because yeah. the issue clearly was that they stopped charging a mission to get into the the whole space. Yeah, that's definitely probably the issue for the declining attendance. Yeah. Don't you think? Uh, oh, yes, because people were uncomfortable going right. because of uh, issues that were happening back there. That that kind of news would have deterred me. Yeah. You know what I mean? If if it had seemed like oh this is Disney, so it's going to be at least safe. Mm-hmm um you know fun jessica rabbit theming like adult disney like it seems safe but then you start hearing about people getting their stuff stolen or getting like assaulted or whatever teenagers up to no good yeah i think that's a pretty clear yeah 
pretty clear reason for its demise, unfortunately. Yeah. Anyway. Also, just changing attitudes about, you know, what children should be allowed to even, like, be exposed to or, like, you know, I just feel like as time goes on, it's hard to make a case for, yes, we are a children's entertainment company, and yes, five feet away, we have a nightclub. Yeah. You know, the world just isn't really like that anymore. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, I forgot to mention the eight tracks. That's probably one of the one people are more familiar with, but it's a 70s and 80s themed dance club. Oh, eight tracks. Got it. Yeah. I didn't understand. It, it tracks, was like the. Yeah, it yeah. was opened in 92 and closed in 2008. So it made it till the end. Yeah. You know? Wow. That is quite the long run. Yeah. Wow. I, I wish we could go back in time and experience Pleasure Island one more time. Um, or in my case, just experience it at all. But I'm glad we got to cover it today and yeah, celebrate. Yeah, in my case too, yeah. Um, yeah, it was fun. It's a very interesting thing to do a New Year's every night. Kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I was, I was just thinking. I think about it every New Year. <laughs> because, oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that I makes remember sense. remember one of the things I knew about it before doing this that really stood out in my mind was the New Year celebration because I think that was their like signature. Yeah. You know, I should thing. make us some Pleasure Island shirts to wear on New Year's. Who knew that we had so much to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> Pleasure Island. Yeah. Well, I mean, very a big and interesting piece of Disney history. Like, I think a lot of people that um, didn't experience it, don't have interest in that, or are kind of like it's a head scratcher of a, of a thing for them to choose to do. But then on the other hand, I, I get where he was coming from. You know, like business wise. Trying to appeal to. Th we don't want you to have to leave property. Yeah, trying to appeal to the 20 somethings who are leaving Disney to go. Yeah. To a club somewhere else. Yeah, I get it. I get the idea of like retaining your guests. But yeah, I, yeah. I also see how it didn't work out for them. Yeah. Unfortunate. Well, come to Lush, everybody. Um, <laughs> if you've enjoyed this episode, uh, you should let us know via review on a podcast platform. If you're listening on Apple Music, Spotify, Stitcher, Pandora, iHeart Podcasts, or any of the other ones. Thanks for listening. Yep. Um, and if you want a custom shirt, uh, then Ooh. check me out. Check us out at um, Etsy Neverland Navigation. Which club will you pick to get a custom shirt made? <laughs> um that's what i want to know yeah um and i i want someone to order a custom shirt that says i broke my leg at vatican's <laughs> <laughs> i broke my leg at the rock and roll <laughs> roller, dome. roller dome yeah um if you would like to follow us on instagram or tiktok for short form content like disney history videos park uh trivia tips and tricks then you can find us at neverland nav Co. Co. <laughs> on both Instagram and TikTok. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I think that's it. That's it. That's it, baby. Happy <laughs> New Year. Um, do you have any resolutions? Oh, I I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I'm sure. We're filming this early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we haven't made to make our... This comes out on New Year's, but I've got a few more days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, keep me posted. Okay. Do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't really make New Year's resolutions. I don't really either, but like, I, you know. We did, we made Disney New Year's resolutions last year on this show. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what any of them were? I think they were all like, oh, we didn't actually make resolutions. No, we were being snarky about people doing things they shouldn't be doing in I Disney. I forgot what it was. Yeah. It was like, I resolved. I don't walk backwards in Disney World. Right. <laughs> I resolve that I will continue not taking flash photographs yeah, on dark rides. On, on a mansion. Right. I'll stop that. That's rude. Yeah. Well, until the new year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this episode, it, it did fly off the rails a little bit, but it was very pleasurable. <laughs> it sure was. And until the new year, we'll see you on our next adventure. <laughs> Goodbye. It's only New Year. This it's is true. the New Year. Oh no. <laughs>